say. So understanding that, I will say if we can start and see if we can get some public communication, then we might can eventually get to where she's saying, I don't know if I'll get that extreme, don't get me wrong, but I'll just start with trying to get them here publicly. We'll, we'll have a draft to, okay. to do that, okay? Thank you, President Kincaid. Okay. That, that completes Mr. our speakers Chairman. for this, for this <laughs> evening. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jackie. That's okay. I just Indeed. got one thing to say about this Flint Journal article. I've been hanging around the city of Flint, and I know that, and I truly believe, that somebody much, much bigger than Marjorie Raymer instigated that article in that newspaper. I may be wrong, but I do believe that somebody threw Marjorie up under the bus. And I don't believe we'll ever get to the true story because all of us know that there's always been a family of Mr. Biggs in this city. And that's how come our city hasn't prospered the way it should be. And each and every one of you guys know that. If you look around the city, just look around the city. Every city, Lansing, Ann Arbor, they all have tall buildings. The city of Flint only has one tall building because the other one's getting ready to fall. So somebody, somebody in this city had Marjorie Raymer to instigate that story. And I bet you 10 to 1, we'll never know. We'll never know. Even though Marjorie was thrown up under that bus, she's still not going to say where she got those orders from. And those orders came from somebody that does not want this council to come out from under a state takeover. Mr. Ballinger said that himself in his little article that he wrote, and he don't know nothing about me, and he really don't know nothing about anybody on this council, because I don't think he's been in our presence, nor has he went into our past to see what we have done in this city. So somebody does not want us to be out from up under a state takeover. And this is just the beginning. Just watch it and see. And when it happens, when you find out the little tidbits, you say, yeah, she was right. But it's bigger than Marjorie Raymer. It's much bigger. Mr. President, Mr. can I say thank, something real quick, Mr. President? Thank, thank you, Jack. Mr. President, can I say I something? I realize that I'm out of order. Excuse, yeah, you're out of order okay. right now, okay? But those so please, please statements take your that seat. were written about Excuse women, me. I would suggest that you file a federal civil rights complaint, not with the state, but with the federal government, and you will know who is the culprit of that. I, I, I'd like to say something. Ms. Poplar, I applaud you for that. Thank you very much for that initiative. On my behalf, I feel that it was unfair to me and the family that was involved in my situation. And um, I've spoke to some of the family members in my situation, and we got a great understanding, and we had a good rapport at the end. Um, but, for, but first more, I would like to apologize, because I'm going to show somebody that I'm a bigger man than what somebody think that I am. I'm going to apologize to the young man I'm looking at right now that was highly emotional about that situation. If I can go back seven, if I can go back at the age of 17, I would think of things a little differently. But my mother was involved in that. And I know you love your mother. Well, it was the premise of my mother. And I know you love your mother. But I want you to know any emotions that you felt out of that, any pain you may have felt out of that, I'm going to extend my apology to you because I have friends that I love too. But at this particular time, I want you to know that that situation that occurred was attributed to who I am today. And just by the grace of God, we, can't, we don't know what God has in store for us. But whatever he has in store for us, we move towards that purpose. And it's a revelation that we have to embrace. And today is a revelation. So I want to extend my apology to the pain that you may have suffered behind your friend. Because if I had a friend that I do have and I love dearly, I would feel your pain too. 
So that's just something I want to say. And God bless all of y'all. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Um, anyone else? That concludes our speakers for this evening. Uh, we have no resolutions tonight. On our agenda, there are two ordinances for second reading. Uh, they deal with, uh, I just want to explain them real quick. Uh, we've had a public hearing on them. They deal with the zoning of the regulations for uh, medical marijuana dispensary facilities and they deal with the licensing of those facilities. Um, conversations with the city attorney's office, they have asked that we postpone these to the first meeting in January. So there are some things that are going on not only locally, but at the state level, and the attorney's office um, so would like them done till January, is that correct? I'd like to make a motion to postpone. That's correct. Okay, there's a motion to support. postpone. Is there support? <clears throat> support. It's been moved and supported. Discussion? Support. Roll, Madam Clerk. See, Mr. Freeman is gone. Yeah, Mr. Freeman left. Okay. I support it. Uh, Mr. Davis. Yes, yeah, support. Mr. Neely. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mr. Yes. Neely. Yes for postponement. Ms. Galloway. Yes for postponement. Ms. Van Buren. Yes. Mr. Kincaid. Yes. Mr. Mays. Yes for postponement. Ms. Poplo. Yes. Mr. Nolden. Yes. The vote is eight yes, zero no to postpone one three zero three four three point two and one three zero three four four point four. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Are there any council persons wishing to speak at this time? I'm gonna start on this side and then I'll move around. Councilman Nolden. Oh. Right, well, I, I seen your hand first, but you, Mr. You, Mays. I'll, I'll defer to you. Mr. President. I heard in one instance that you said you and Councilman Nolan would inquire to Mr. Early about something, and I got a burning desire for another inquiry. I don't know if I got to put it on record as a formal referral, but to me, if we're in a state of emergency, and if we're not denied the right to meet, the sooner we can get things in order and restore this democracy, the better. In other words, one meeting a month, the city ain't getting their money worth out of me and y'all neither. This is a council meeting that don't just meet out here for show, but to me, the work was always done back in the committee room. And committee meetings has gone away. Now under your leadership and under us working together, I have a burning desire to start committee meetings back up. Now, I know this is a part-time job and I know other people got jobs and I'm retired, I was DMUAW. And I know that if you set the committees up right, and if part of us is here and part of us ain't because of jobs, I understand that. I want people to be able to support their families, they've been elected, and I want them to be good council people. So to make a long request short, what I'm asking is that we go to work for the people, and the more work we do, the sooner we can restore democracy and a regular government. It just behooves me that it ain't nothing that we can do. I believe it is stuff we can do, and I believe we should do it in our committee structures with regular committee meetings, and I want to know if the emergency manager objects to that. We're not getting paid too much or nothing anyway. So I want to see which council people are like me and have the desire to go to work. See, I don't believe in sitting back and letting them figure it out. I believe some of us are smarter than them and we can get it figured out quick and faster, so let's give it a try. I'm suggesting that we institute the committee meetings in that committee meeting, the vice chair chairs the meetings. Oh, that's special affairs, excuse me. 
but I even want special affairs prior to these meetings, but you say ain't nothing on the agenda, so keep in mind what I'm getting at. On the committee meetings, whether they put something on the agenda or not, is certain committee work we could do. For example, if we postpone the second reading on the medical marijuana, if we ain't got a regular committee meeting scheduled, and if you don't see one before we leave here now, I would wonder if I, according to the charter that's still in place, made a motion for a special council meeting, would this council believe that they could do it? Well, I know I could do it with two or more council people. Mr. President, when is the next council meeting scheduled? December the 16th at 5.30. December the 16th at 5.30. Is that on a Monday? Yes. Nothing in between? No. Do you think that's satisfactory? No, but I also know that the only reason we're meeting here today is because the emergency manager allows us. When the emergency manager originally took over from the city of Flint, he terminated all council meetings and all committee meetings. You're and talking about Mike Brown or early? I'm talking about Mike Brown. Okay, and we then, got a new one. I want to test him. Well, and, and we've had, and just so that you know, um, yeah. to my colleagues, we've had this, this discussion with him. And what I think is very important as you meet with him in the next two weeks or, or this week and next week, because I heard him say today that he wanted to reach out to all council members and meet with them. I would hope that each individual council member would express that to him because it really is his decision. Remember, I don't believe in emergency managers, but maybe y'all do. That's why I want to use you to talk to him because that's what y'all, I mean, I mean, you believe in dealing with him a certain way. That's why I protested and got up when he spoke. But I did that, but I mean, I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him myself about it. But if you just told me you believe that that ain't enough meeting, let me ask you another question. Do it cost the city when we meet in a room, or is it free? There's, there's no cost. So why should he object to us meeting? Now, I want to find out if he object to us meeting and if if I have to find out by getting one colleague and invoking the charter because two or more council people can call a meeting with 24-hour notice, but I am just want to see what you come back and tell me. Are you opposed to checking to see if we can get our meetings? No, I've, I've personally we, talked to him about it. Councilman Nolan, um, I mean, if, you were in the meeting. If I, if I could, uh, Councilman Mays, we've had that conversation with him. Um, prior to the election, and he did say that he was open for us to have some additional meetings. Okay, well, can I say this? Next Monday at 5.30, I want to get a notice. I want to move, make a motion that this council meet, and that means you have, under the charter, two or more council members can do it. It don't say if it's in writing, but it says you have to have two or more, and it says you have to get a public notice. And I know that Ms. Brown does her job on notices, and so I'm going to do it in the form of a motion, and let's see what happens.